Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw a duckling in graphite. Now as with every subject, the first thing I like to do is draw the eye. Now with this duckling, the eye was pretty dark, but there was still a very subtle light highlight at the lower part of the iris. So you can see there that when I was building up my darker values, I was keeping that to around the top of the eye and leaving those lighter layers underneath to show through. Now once I got the shape of the eye right, that's my main priority, getting that highlight and the contrast correct, I can then start mapping in the areas of the face. Now this, the way that I'm breaking this up would be exactly the same if I was drawing fur. So I like to start off with the area around the eye that helps to make that eye look more three dimensional and sphere shape. And then I can start blocking in, in this case, the feathers. Now what I'm doing here is I have graphite powder and I'm just using a eye makeup applicator for this. And I'm applying this to my paper and hinting at where my main lights and darks are. I don't want to focus on the details. I'm working just purely on what I think is closest to the skin first, and then I can build up from there. Now, if you've seen many of my other videos here on YouTube, you know that I put a lot of emphasis on the base layer stage. Now, I'm not talking about how we have to get everything really dark or bright, because as you can see here, as I'm building up my layers with my graphite pencils, I'm reinforcing those values. But for that base layer stage, I do map in accurately where those highlights and shadows are going to be. Now, the one thing that I talk about in all videos, not just here on YouTube, but my real time tutorials on Patreon, is by mapping those in in the right place and making sure that they are accurate, that will help to determine the bone and muscular structure of that animal. Now, just like with the fur or feather direction, the way that it's curving over the top of the head here, the position of the shadows and highlights will determine what that animal looks like. Now, the shadows that I'm working on here on the top of the head, that is making it look like the skull curves over and eventually towards the back section of the head and then where it attaches to the neck. So all of these things here are very important to consider at each stage. Now, as I'm reinforcing my darks here, I'm also reinforcing the feather direction. My main aim for this project was to create a real-time tutorial for my Patreon channel where I could have a lesson that was more for a beginner tutorial but still got a good level of photorealism that was then an in-between stage for then progressing up to drawing fur. Because all of the techniques that I'm using here, the way that I'm using the blending stamps, the erasers and the pencils, building up those layers, all of this can then be applied to drawing fur. Now the way that we draw the feathers is very similar for this duckling because they are very fluffy looking. It's not feathers like on a bird of prey for instance, they are going to be very different. But here, if I were to get the feather texture looking like an owl or a bird of prey, then this obviously wouldn't look like a duckling. It also wouldn't look like the young animal, so a, a, an adult duck would obviously have those individual larger feathers. So the way that I would be drawing that compared to this, even though they're the same animal, would be very different. But for this texture, the way we get that looking like a little duckling and that it is at that baby feather fluffy stage is all in using the pencils correctly. Now, the one thing that I feel is really important is during my real time tutorials for my Patreon channel is whenever I make a mistake or something happens that I don't like, I always include those in my tutorials because it's part of the drawing process and these things happen very frequently. It's how we learn to correct those mistakes that makes us improve our drawing skills. So I always do include them. Now, a few moments ago, you saw that I kept reworking the back of the head where it nearly attaches to the neck. What happened there is my sketch or transfer line was a little bit too thick. So I was a bit, probably a bit heavy handed with my pencil. And that there left a little bit more of a lighter area when I came back in with my erasers and pencil layers on top. Now I do not want that showing through. So I was actually then having to correct that through adding some more graphite and then more of my graphite pencils to make sure that I covered that up. Now that's something there that again, as I said, all of that is included in the real time version. There are no sections of this tutorial like sped up or cut out. Now the other thing like with all of my other graphite tutorials on Patreon is I draw and create that tutorial with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So every process is explained in the moment. It's a great way of then drawing along to that tutorial if you want to, given that there are no sections that are sped up. So if you would like to draw along to this duckling or any of my other tutorials, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. 
Now when it came to working on the beak, my main priority was to make sure that this looked like a little bit more of a shinier surface. And in order to do that, you've got to make sure that your contrast and your values are accurate. So you want bright highlights and dark shadows. That would be the case if you're drawing anything that has a bright reflection. So metal, if you've got the, the collar of a, a dog tag or something like that, all of those metal elements, anything that's shiny, you want really, really nice contrast. Now the beak didn't have a overly bright highlight, unlike the eye. You can see that the reflection in the eye is still brighter than the portions of the beak. But if you do have any areas that are particularly bright, so like the reflection in the eye, then it's always worthwhile to allow the white of the paper to show through. Don't put a layer of graphite down over the entire highlight. Therefore, you know that you've got the brightest in place first because it's the white of the paper. And if you need to darken it up at your later stages, then you can just do that gradually. It's one of the easiest ways of making sure that you're getting those highlights with graphite nice and bright. Now in all of my tutorials here on YouTube, I speak about how I like to work in smaller manageable chunks, but there are sometimes an exception where I like to work with a little bit more of a larger area. Now you can see here that I've applied graphite powder to the entire body of the duck. The reason being, I wanted to make sure that I had the softness of my values and how they transition from highlights to my shadows. So the whole front surface here that I'm currently now working on is so light and soft looking that it gradually rolls over the underside of the lower belly part of this duckling. So I wanted to make sure that I captured that and that all starts off with a soft blended base layer. So for this situation, I felt that working in that larger area for this was the right thing to do. Now that being said, look at how I'm now breaking up again into smaller chunks when I start working with my details. One of the things that I find is if we work in individual set layers, it's very easy to rush through very important layers and therefore the portrait when it's finished doesn't have the same depth or detail that we may like. So if you do feel yourself hesitating or staring at your reference photo, not quite sure where you should be working, then that's a good indication that you're potentially working on too much of a larger area. Maybe scale that down and just work on two or three inches at one time. Now I have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in graphite. If that's of interest, I'll link that in the description below. But although there I'm talking about drawing fur, the way that I'm explaining for the tips for the pencil technique would be exactly the same for drawing feathers. So you can see here that I'm following three main concepts. I'm following the fur direction or feather direction, I'm following the feather thickness and also the length of those feathers. Now the feather direction is obviously how we move the erasers or how we move the pencils. The thickness in with graphite situation is how we have got that lead sharpened. So I very rarely work with a really, really sharp point. I personally feel that that indents the paper and it's an effect that I just personally don't like in my work. The other thing there is also the way that the pencil strokes are lengthened and shortened at the right point. Now the pencil strokes, if they were to keep the same length from start to finish, the duckling or any animal is going to have a really flat appearance. So you can see that the feathers near the neck, the top part where it's a little bit darker, are shorter than the ones at the lower part of the body that I'm now currently working on. This variation here is gonna to help to make it look like the neck is a little bit further away because the body of the duckling is further forward given how this duckling is resting down on the grass slightly. So all of these things here are gonna to help to make more of that three-dimensional feel in the drawing. Now an element of any portrait that I really can't stress enough is the use of layers. You can really see just how many layers I've applied here, not just with my pencils, but also using the erasers. This is gonna to help to make so much more additional depth. If we just work with two or three layers, the portrait will still look flat, even if your contrast is okay. You'll find though that the more layers you add, the better your contrast gets. So it all, both of those things do work in conjunction with each other. If you feel like you wanna get a little bit more depth and detail to your work, the contrast and layers that you use are two of the most important things. Now to finish this duckling off, I did have to think a little bit more ahead during the planning stage because I knew I didn't want to add any kind of background. I liked how the white paper made the duckling the main focus, but I didn't want the duckling to look like it was floating. So for my portrait, I decided to add some grass to help merge that duckling onto the paper. 
So I'm just using a paper blending stump to apply my graphite here and get that soft out of focus effect first. Then once I was happy with that, I'm gonna to start to build up some of the detailed grass with my graphite pencils. Now this technique works really well and it can be applied to any other instance. So you know, if you've got a dog portrait and you want to make sure that, that doesn't look like it's floating, this technique here is very quick but effective. So as I said, all of this is shown in that real time version. And the one thing that's important here, just like when drawing the feathers or fur, is you do also want to use your erasers to remove some of that grass to make it look like some of those are catching a little bit more of the light. You don't want all of your grass stems to be the same value. So you've got a mixture of your highlights, midtones, and shadows. And here's a photo of my finished drawing. I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. And if you are interested in drawing along to the real time version, you get the reference photo, line art and full material list as well. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I do upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching.